In the last episode, I showed you this lovely interference pattern created when waves of light pass through the tiny slits in this diffraction grating. And I made the point that although you couldn't know where each individual photon was going to land, you did know the odds. Because the odds of a photon landing are highest where the peaks of the interference pattern are highest. And so, in short, I said that the interference pattern was a pattern of probabilities. And then the light waves that made up the interference pattern were themselves waves of probabilities. If you want to know where a photon will deposit its energy, the best you can do is get the probability. And that's what this function does. This is the Schrodinger wave function. The value of this function at a particular location is the probability that the photon will deposit its energy at that location. And that of course means that the position of the photon is indeterminate. It is impossible to know where the photon is precisely because the photon has no precise position until it deposits its energy. Oh, we know something about the position of that photon. Within limits, we can define the path that it'll follow. But until that photon deposits its energy, it has no precisely defined position. This uncertainty was described by Werner Heisenberg in 1927. He used this simple expression. The uncertainty in position times the uncertainty in momentum will always be greater than or equal to half of Planck's constant. To say this more simply, you cannot simultaneously know the position and momentum of a particle. The more accurately you know one, the less accurately you know the other. The reason for this uncertainty is often related to the observer effect. The act of measuring the position of a particle disturbs its momentum. It's easy to understand this. In order to measure the position or momentum of a particle, you simply bounce another particle off of it. Of course, that changes the position and momentum of the original particle. By the same token, if I want to measure the position or the momentum of a particle, say this apple, I've got to bounce things off of it, like these photons. And that changes the position and the momentum of the thing I'm trying to measure. Whoa! This explanation gives us hope that by improving our measurement technology, we can improve the accuracy of both position and momentum. And this is true to a point. But look at this equation again. It's got a hard limit. And the reason for that hard limit is that all particles are subject to the same probability waves that photons are. You might think that the atoms in your body have precise positions, but that's not quite true. The atoms within your body are made up of particles, protons, electrons, and neutrons. And the protons and neutrons are themselves made up of particles called quarks. All of these particles travel in waves. They all have a wave function. The probability that one of these particles will make itself felt at a particular location is the value of the wave function of that particle at that location. This might give you hope that you can force the value of the wave function to 100% and thereby precisely define the position of the photon. So let's try this. Get yourself a rope, sort of like this one, and we're going to take this in and we're going to tie it to the end of a doorknob. And we'll pull it nice and tight. And we'll start to wave it around until we can get a nice standing wave. There we go. That's a nice standing wave. Nice bimodal standing wave. We can measure the momentum of that wave accurately. 
We know the frequency, we know the amplitude, we know the mass of the rope. So we can determine the momentum to arbitrary accuracy. But where is that momentum? It's everywhere on the rope. The momentum has no precise position. It's not just that we're uncertain about it. There is no position. It's utterly indeterminate. The momentum has no position. Now let's shake that rope one more time. But this time, we're going to shake it randomly. We're going to shake it with every possible frequency and amplitude. We're going to use perfect randomness, absolute white noise. Now look at that rope. It's dead flat. Why? Because the random noise integrates out to zero. For every wave in the up direction, there's a wave in the down direction. It all cancels itself out and leaves the rope dead flat. The position of that random momentum is clearly known. It's right there at the end of the rope where my hand is shaking like crazy. But that momentum has no value. It's purely random. It's absolutely indeterminate. What causes this indeterminacy? Waves. Waves. The momentum of a wave can be precisely known, but only if that momentum is everywhere on the wave. The position of the momentum can be precisely known, but only if the momentum is so random that it integrates out. The uncertainty principle is a principle about waves. Some people are bothered by the uncertainty principle because they feel that it limits their ability to know precisely what's going on. But that's just silly. I mean, you're not limited because you don't know the precise position of an ocean wave. An ocean wave has no precise position. That's not a limit. That's just reality. It is not the uncertainty of waves that people find so disconcerting. Rather, it is the fact that matter itself is made up of waves of probability.